Hello and welcome to uh, Devlog23. Today I'm going to be talking to you guys about uh, scaling balance changes for the update. So, a uh, lot to talk about. There's some things not covered here, but this is going to be most of the changes to scaling, uh, primarily focusing on challengers, quests, and Z Soul changes. Uh, there's chapters at the bottom of the video, or at, like the, the timeline, if you want to click around and go to a specific section. Uh, thank you for tuning in. All right, so to get started, I'm going to go ahead and get straight into kind of the mentality. I feel like that's the most important thing to start with. Uh, the mentality behind some of these enemy changes. So, if you played Dragon Ball Apollo, you're very familiar with road bumps, uh, notably Boo Saga, things like that, where you'll be playing and you'll just be stuck at a quest for hours of grinding. Um, we don't like that. Uh, you don't like that. So we've kind of we we went through and painstakingly looked at pretty much every quest to make sure that every quest not only makes sense from the last quest, but makes sense for what the quest is so a big reason behind the rescale was to kind of make the um, progression smoother make it so you're constantly fighting not only more difficult enemies but you're getting tp that's logical for where that's at you're you have plenty of things to grind you have challenges you can go do you can go start a whole new movie quest line you can go do some patroller quests things like that so that throughout progression even if it gets difficult you're always going to be getting rewards relevant to that difficulty as well as having options to grind so obviously we want to maintain a certain level of challenge grind if you will uh, however we don't want that to end up feeling as if you're making no progress uh, things like the mastery level progress system which i'll cover on a little bit later um it's already been talked about in devlog 19 however so i won't get too much into it but moving away from the mentality behind some of these rescales, I'll talk about kind of Zenny changes. So um, Zenny isn't difficult to get for say on the live server. You can get Zenny from many places. However, we've added some new places to get Zenny. Notably, so the Z storyline would give you Zenny upon first time completion of all those quests. However, we removed that, but then we remembered, wait, that was a thing. We, we almost didn't add this back. Uh, but we went ahead and did some math calculation stuff so that we could easily throw Zenny on all of the quests and know the exact amount that it gives without needing to plug in every single like 250 plus numbers, you know, and make a quest or go put that in. Nope. Just Zenny. It's all throughout all the quests. You get Zenny from Z quests, super quests, patroller quests, and movie quests, and GT. So every single first time quest will give Zenny not repeatables. You will still need to farm challengers for consistent Zenny gain. However, progressing through the story, you will now have Zenny throughout your progression. Uh, a smaller change, Zenny on daily missions. You're going to get, um, I believe it's 100 on each daily mission. So there's three daily missions, you get 300. And then once you complete all uh, three, you get an extra 100 for 400 Zenny. So uh, moving past that, we have notably shop changes include um, mostly more items, things like the cosmetic crate, a little disjointed that sentence, but follow with me. The cosmetic crate has been removed. Um, and now instead of that, we have voucher trades. So some of you might notice on the live server already, we did this. Um, you trade vouchers for event outfits. Show some of those on screen now. Uh, you get to buy old event outfits with vouchers. So if you miss the event, you buy with vouchers. Same thing. Vouchers are sort of transitioning to be a cosmetic thing. Uh, meaning maybe there will be cosmetics in the future. Not this update. Like cosmetics um, slash cosmetic. Like uh, the t-shirts, particles, things like that sort. Anyway, you're going to be able to buy a lot of those. Every cosmetic outfit. Even the ones that were missing that you guys were to ask me to add are now there. Because... Figure why not if we're moving them already and setting up a new shop. So you could buy all of these things on the screen with vouchers now um, instead of the cosmetic crate. So uh, the cosmetic crate has been um, subsequently removed from the store. Or it will be in the update, of course. Removed from the store, removed from the, I think, supporter kit was the only one that got the key. And you will be able to trade in that key for some vouchers. So you're not just like stuck with these keys. So you could trade them in for vouchers great moving on we have challenger changes this is a pretty big section so not only is there new challengers some of these new challengers include the likes of roshi some of the kais some of um super go so goku and vegeta got split mind you before they only had six stars it's like going from early z to the, like literally the first saga to the last saga kind of hard anyway they have two challengers they have z goku z vegeta 
Super Goku, and Super Vegeta. So, you know, there's Z counterparts and their Super counterparts. Meaning you're seeing more Goku and Vegeta. Yay! Um, Trunks has his own challenger. He split off from the Z fighters. I think, I believe that includes Kid Trunks. Um, Majin Buu, it's called Super Majin Buu. It's not the Super Saga. It's like Super Buu, all the absorptions, as well as Kid Buu. Um... And then there's also Baby got his own challenger. The GT bosses challenger started getting a little two pack, so now he has his own. Um, Beerus and Whis became the God of Destruction challengers, meaning Vados and Champa moved over there. So with this new change to challenger drops, you will start getting Z Souls, Kyle Ken shards, God, and Primal XP earlier than you get the form itself, allowing you to level the form ahead of time or you know work towards. Things get things like Z Souls, Kyle Ken shards before you get the form or technique in that case, um, which will allow you to get a little head start on the form as well as just already have the things so you're already be familiar without needing to go figure it out after you get the form. There will also be a more balanced drop ratio between the races. Some of the races had a little bit too many souls for each tier. Some of them had too little, so we've kind of adjusted that. Um, they will also blend into the next tier, so you can get both tier 1 and tier 2 from a given challenger. Not only, uh, there's also, I believe, we're dropping more of the tier, tier 1, 2, and 3 themselves, the ones you could trade for all the race ones, so those will be dropping more, um, sporadically. I don't know, sporadically is probably not a good word for that. Um, and then they're also gonna be, challengers have always intended to be scaled based upon the quest that they're unlocked at, so if you beat 214, that challenger should be relatively similar. You should be able to beat the 214 uh, quest, 214 quest. You should be able to go beat the challenger. The challengers are a nudge stronger. However, they're going to be consistent. Um, b before there were some inconsistencies with where you'd get a challenger and how strong they would be. So that would just be more consistent. One thing I'll mention, God and Primal XP drops are now uncapped. So um god uh would be capped at level seven you can only get to level seven you need to go do we shing for eight nine ten that's not a thing anymore um figure the amount of xp you need for those levels also that applies to primal primal is also level 10 you should really go watch mastery uh devlog 19 a lot of cool info there's a card up here so the level's uncapped we figure the xp requirements for level eight nine and ten are high enough that like you're gonna you're still gonna want to do special training is, is kind of the point here however you can continue doing challengers and along with the level uncapping there will be more consistent god and primal drop sources uh rather than being kind of sporadic some of those challengers sucked etc etc to finish off the challenger section the old upgrades were increasing your kill count basically you'd have three kills normally you can get four and five and then divine gets two for seven so now you can get an extra one you can uh so everyone can get up to six and divine will end up at eight basically you get three of these upgrades to double your original count along with that um you have respawn time reduction and total time so you'll be able to go from 10 second respawn to five second respawn you'll be able to go from a five minute time limit to a 10 minute time limit so really there won't be any time limit issues at that point so you're going to be buying the kill count upgrades kill limit with Zenny, you're going to be buying the respawn time with vouchers and you're going to be buying the total time limit with dragon balls the, the three different sets for each upgrade so the, the idea behind spreading throughout the traders was giving all the currencies a little bit of something to do beyond just whatever they already trade right moving on to some z soul changes oh do, there's quite a lot some of this was mentioned in mastery devlog 19 and some of it was like it's been sporadically mentioned throughout however the race to race conversion so if i had a super saiyan z soul and i wanted a giant namekian z soul both their tier one forms as you will um instead of needing two super saiyan z souls oh sorry backwards instead of needing three super saiyan z souls for one giant z soul you just need two super saiyan z souls for one giant z soul so it's not free you're not just trading back and forth however it's no longer it, it's better um uh, this is going to be all about those Z-Soul trades, really. However, same race down trading went from 3 to 1. So, what does that mean? Basically, if I wanted to trade a Super Saiyan 2 Z-Soul for a Super Saiyan 1 Z-Soul, before, I would need 3 Super Saiyan 2 Z-Souls. 3 to 1. So, you just need 1 Super Saiyan 2 Z-Soul for a Super Saiyan Z-Soul. 
cool that's three times better amazing um in the same vein same race up trading so if i had a super saiyan z soul and i wanted a super saiyan 2 z soul before you need to trade three super saiyan 1 z souls you, you trade them for a shard and you need three of those shards for a tier 1 z soul so you you would need six super saiyan z souls for a super saiyan 2 z soul um it's now just two so i, I get two super saiyan 1 z souls for a super saiyan Two Zizel. So that's great. Uh really just makes everything to do with other races and trading in between your own race better. So just a lot of Z Soul trade improvements. Again, watch Mastery Devlog 19. Lots of changes to the the way you level Z Souls. Re redu reduced requirements for leveling your forms. Way you level Z Souls. Let's just say I didn't say that. Anyway. Alrighty, to end off this video, I'll make one mention of the armor stat changes. You can see that on screen here. Again, uh, we, we post these feature highlights over on the Twitter. However, you can also follow, just hashtag teasers on our Discord if you want to keep up to date with our teasers. Maybe some of you only watch our YouTube videos. We have a Discord where most of our talking is done. If you want to ask me literally any questions, I'm chronically online. So feel free to ask any questions. I'll answer to whatever ability I'm willing to give sounds weird but there's some things i won't answer is what i'm getting at however i'll answer most things especially if it's something we've already announced that maybe you just don't know about kind of thing uh anyway thanks for watching this devlog i uh, appreciate you for tuning in have a great day